lose our bone density as we age, but it's never too late to think about ways to keep them strong. So joining me now, we've got Dr. Elaine Chin here and naturopathic doctor. <laughs> both of you with us because um, this is uh, you know on many people's minds I would say almost particularly women and when you are getting older you need to think about how you're gonna keep the bones strong it's so important so what do we need to know about our bones Elaine one of the things that I was very surprised at when I got to medical school was an aha moment that our bones are actually a, an organ and it's alive we we build bones with something called osteoblastic cells and it reshapes so that it's perfect with osteoclastic cells. So it's really more than a coat hanger for our beautiful skin, right. our fatty tissue and our strong muscles. Um, it actually hides something that's really important for our survival. It's our bone marrow, you know, in our long bones. And inside our bone marrow is this gelatinous thing mm -hmm. that builds almost two billion red cells every day to carry of oxygen. Right? Amazing. And, and it also makes our white cells, which helps us prevent us from getting infections and those important platelets so that we clot when we do actually have a cut. So it's, it's an important organ. We, mm -hmm. we think of it as something that we grow with until we're in teens, but it actually lives to grow and extend until our 30s. So during that period of time, especially for women, it's really important because when we get into menopause, we won't talk about that, um, <laughs> we start to get brittle bone. But the thing that we don't like when we get menopausal is we gain 10 to 15 percent of our body weight, but in fact it's our body's way of giving us a little bit of weight stress okay. so that our bones stay strong. So ladies, don't don't be oh, mad at your body. I've never heard it put that way before. Yeah, isn't that a very nice way to frame it? I think that's <laughs> yeah. beautiful. I want to go eat some donuts now. Well, that's after I want to help my bones stay strong. Wow. So that's really interesting. I've never heard that take on it. Okay, so uh, Elizabeth, what do we need to do up to our 30s? Because it mm -hmm. almost seems like that time is very crucial to start building some bone strength. What can we do to make sure our bones are strong up until it is, that point? It's critical. So up to your 30s and beyond your 30s. Yes. Elaine alluded to it with the extra weight, but it's actually the stress on the bones. So through exercise, that's the best way yes. to build strong bones. So daily weight bearing exercise, whether that's jogging, brisk walking, weight training, all of those things are essential. Okay. And in addition to that, ensuring that you're getting enough calcium, but also calcium's cofactors. So the things that help calcium get into the bone. Those are vitamin K, vitamin D, and magnesium. So ensuring that you're getting all of those through the through the diet, limiting donuts, sodas, <laughs> so coffee. don't go eat the donuts. Yeah, don't go eat the donuts because okay. all those foods lack micronutrients, and you really need enough micronutrients in your diet to build strong bones. Okay, really interesting. Uh, Elaine, you say that drugs affect our bone mass yeah, as well. We take that for granted too, and there's there's drugs that we can get over the counter for reflux, but also. There's proton pump inhibitors that we call like Prepulsed, Nexium. They prevent us from absorbing the calcium that we talk about. And then there's drugs like Fosamax, which is a biphosphonate. It's been well shown that although it builds bones for people who are osteoporotic, mm -hmm. that's brittle bone, mm -hmm. it doesn't give us very strong bones. So we're gonna watch out. So best thing to do is prevention and start getting stronger until your 30s and 40s. It always goes back to that. It goes back to eat healthy and move, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Everything always goes back to that. So I want to talk a little bit about um, calcium. How much do you actually need and can you go overboard? How do you supplement to get it into your diet? Yeah, that's a great question because yes, you can go overboard. Uh -huh. So what you need is about a thousand milligrams. Push that up to 1,200 milligrams if you're either pregnant or over the age of 50. Okay. And the best way to get calcium is through your diet. The reason for that is that over supplementation with calcium has been shown to actually have the potential to deposit into your arteries and stay there and harden. And so over time, that can actually make you at an increased risk of having a heart attack, which of course we do not want. So the key take home is to try to get it from your diet up to that level of about 1200 milligrams. Mm -hmm. And if you need to supplement, never supplement with more than 500 milligrams of calcium in a single dose. Divide your doses so that you're never getting more, more than that so that you're ensuring that it's just moving nicely into your bone and not moving into your artery where you don't want it. So could you do like a 500, uh, a 500 milligram pill and then the rest through diet or just stay away from the calcium pills in general? Absolutely, so I would encourage people to calculate how much calcium they think they're getting through their diet yeah. and then whatever overage you need, take that through supplementation up to 500 milligrams in one sitting, but not more. 
And give us some veggies that we should include uh, for calcium. Yeah, so when people think of calcium, we always think of dairy products, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a ton of other stuff that's not dairy-based that's super rich in calcium. The richest source of calcium is actually canned salmon. So all those little soft edible bones are an incredible superfood for, for calcium and omegas. Okay. Also green leafy vegetables, broccoli, kale, bok choy, great sources of calcium, nuts and seeds, and also fortified non-dairy products like soy milk are great as well. Good to know, that's great. Let's talk a little bit about uh, vitamin D now. Mm -hmm. How much of the vitamin D do we need? Yeah. I've heard we need a ton. Yeah, so vitamin D is our sunshine vitamin. You can't actually ingest it. We have to make it from our skin. Yeah. So my answer always is it depends. It depends where we live. So most of us who live in the northern climates generally don't get enough sun um, in the winter. But now we're seeing our clients who live in the south don't get enough sun in the summer because it's too hot to go outside. <laughs> oh. and, then, and then we put our sunblock on, so yes. it negates that. So the bottom line here is Elizabeth and I really say measure your vitamin D. With a couple of drops of blood, you can do that. And mm -hmm. so then you know where you're starting and then you know your genetics because you can actually do your genetics and that's how we kind of decide on the dose. So is there an average? Like, do you know what yeah. your dose is per day? Well, we, we generally say at least a 1,000 international units in the winter. Right. Okay. That's what I've heard as well. Mm -hmm. um, and are you blocking the vitamin D getting into your skin by wearing sunblock? It's not getting in there? Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess you got to pick your poison there, right? Because exactly. we should, be, yeah. we should yeah. be using sunblock. So after 3 p.m., I generally say to people, don't relather. Oh, I see. So let a little bit get mm -hmm. in. Or before 10, get some sun. Okay. All right. That's mm -hmm. fair. Listen, great information. Uh, we already talked uh, about calcium, and I love the list of vegetables you gave us because it doesn't always have to come from dairy. Keep those bones strong. 